Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, thanks for tuning in. Today I want to talk to you about problems I sometimes encounter when I uh, work with stamps and how I overcome them. Every stamper will know this feeling. You just bought a great set of stamps and you can't wait to get home and try them out. You unpack the stamps and then with at least one of the stamps you don't know what to do with them. Either the coloring on the back of the stamp isn't right or the image is so confusing at first glance that you're thinking what on earth is going on there. I am going to show you today a really fun and effective way of getting past those issues. At least it's something that's working for me very nicely. Um, so let's get started. I am starting by selecting my stamp and getting some watercolor paper. It is probably not necessary to really take watercolor paper, but you will be adding water to the image. So bear that in mind when you're selecting the type of card that you're using. Copy paper is probably not suitable for this, but anything sturdier than that. I mean, it's only a sketch in any case, so it's not a masterpiece, but uh, bear that in mind. You also want to make sure that the ink that you're using is water soluble. I am using the Tim Holtz Distress Ink which I really, really like uh, for projects like this. Um, they're very versatile in itself and um, yeah, I really like them. What you want to bear in mind is though that for this type of exercise, you need to choose a shade that's fairly neutral that um, doesn't have too much red or yellow or blue in it because that would just um, limit your options later on very much. So take something neutral. I'm taking a kind of grayish uh, uh, shade and uh, just m with the rocker block uh, lay the image down onto the card. And then I'm going to add the next image as well because I want to show you both images because both of them have different reasons of why I chose them. In case that you're wondering about the rocker block that I'm using, I am going to uh, have a tutorial in the near future about them where I go more into depth of why I like using them. In fact, it's actually the only ink block that I'm using at all. I don't use anything else other than the rocker blocks. When the ink has had a few minutes to dry, use a clean brush and some water and start drawing out the ink from the image. This will create shadows um, on the picture itself and that's why it is kind of important to use water soluble ink. You can probably achieve the same visual effects with markers or other medium but I actually quite like this uh, technique with the water soluble inks and that's what works best for me because I just literally use what I have and while I work the image itself this actually the process gives me the ideas that I use later on when I'm coloring the, the the picture. I'm going just over everything here lightly at the moment and um, see if I can draw out as much of the uh, shadows as I can. And as you can see, this image on the left looks already a lot more dimensional than the flowers on the right. So I am doing exactly the same with the flowers at the moment. 
and just see if I can draw out what I need because this image it will turn out very very pretty but it is very confusing it's a lot of fine lines and it is very difficult to actually see what what it is and by adding a few shadows uh, to the to the image um, it actually lets you see exactly where is what and um, where are the flowers where are the leaves and just to enhance this a little bit I'm actually going in with my brush directly onto the ink pad itself with a wet brush and um, that's the nice thing about these uh, water soluble ink pads because you can actually pick up some of the ink onto the brush directly and so then enhance the effect on the paper and as you can see it really starts to make a lot more sense now that the image itself starts to become more dimensional and I felt at that moment that this was a good idea to actually go back onto the doll and do the same and I think I quite like the way this turned out eventually because it doesn't look quite as flat um, on the lower half of the of the person and as you can see there is the transformed image as you can see this picture in gray and white looks really really great already but I decided to add some more color to it just because I had problems with the doll figure itself with the dark colors on the back of the stamp and I wanted to achieve something light and inspirational that I can work with. I tend to use a lot of purples and blues um, in my daily life and in crafting so that's why you see a lot of purple and pinks and blue in the image but it is a lot lighter than the uh, original image on the stamp itself. I will list a full list of materials that I've been using in the description box and I will also include this in the blog post that's going up on my website um, that will accompany this tutorial itself. Here you see the same image stamped in different colors and now you will understand why I said that it should be a fairly neutral shade on the ink pa pad itself because those type of bright um, images will really limit you in that it will be very difficult to color them in later on if of course you just want to have um, the shading effect itself then any color of ink pad will do and so I just keep going adding more color playing around um, as I had mentioned before I am using Prisma colors for this particular project and this color that I'm using there at the moment is probably the closest to skin color that you can get without mixing colors um, it's it's a very very good uh, pencil but generally speaking I really do have a love-hate relationship with Prisma colors simply because they are just so fragile as you can see this is a very very short pencil and I've never used it and I have a lot of these uh, pencils they just keep breaking every time you try to sharpen them the tip will just literally break off um, in inside the pencil already and I have to say that those pencils are just too expensive to have such poor quality to be honest with you I like my Faber Castells I have never had a problem with them the color payoff is brilliant they are a lot more versatile I use them a lot for my parchment craft as well because they are wax um, oil based and um, yeah they just work a lot better for me now I know that 
a lot of people swear by Prisma colors and um, that's fine, but they just don't work for me. Um, I got them because a lot of people are using them and I just wanted to try them out. And to be honest, I like the colors and they have a very a great variety of um, colors. And as you can see here, the image looks a lot more cheerful already compared to the dark image on the uh, stamp itself. Adding a bit of red just to liven it up a bit more there. And as you can see, it's actually turned out a real quite cute. Um, it's nothing spectacular, but that's not supposed to be spectacular. It's supposed to give me an idea of what I want to do with the image. And this exercise is really helping me to achieve that. And um, just like I did with the figure, I'm just going in with the pencils now into the flower. Uh, I'm using mainly reds for this and just literally trying to find my way around there bit by bit because this image looks just so confusing to me. Now other people might think you don't know what I'm talking about but to me this looks really really confusing and I think most stampers will have had at least one image where you have the same problem that you just really don't know where to start. So this is what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to figure out what actually is in the image and just laying down a bit of shade and color um, helps me to achieve that. And I literally just went in with the darkest color first and now it makes sense to me. That actually makes sense to me. Uh, whereas before I really didn't know what to do. So, and that is actually the end of the video already. Um, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope it helped somebody out there and gave you maybe some inspiration of using stems that you haven't been able to use before because of those reasons um, that I had mentioned before. And yeah, thanks for watching, see you later.